favorite Harry Potter characters is Severus Snape. I wrote an entire concept album about the Princess Tale in 2011, and I've been playing my sad Snape songs live all over the place ever since. So that inspires all kinds of people to start conversations with me about this character and what his deal is. These conversations are not always pleasant. In fact, I recently made a person in James Potter cosplay slam their fists down on my merch table and angrily start yelling at me just by having an album called The Princess Tale for sale there. At that same conference, I actually spoke on a panel about Snape, and the audience was totally divided between people who love him, who hate him, and people who honestly still have no clue what to think about the guy. If there's one thing I've noticed whenever I bring up Severus Snape, it's that people get really riled up about him. People ask me quite regularly what my feelings are about this character. While I think you can tell this by listening to The Prince's Tale, I empathize with his pain, and I'm really interested in the way his mind works. But I do not by any means think that he is a good person, or that many of his actions are worthy of celebration. I don't think that what he's been through excuses any of the terrible things he's done, I just think that it makes him a more interesting and complex character. If you haven't read or seen Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows and you're wary of spoilers, now would be a great time to go watch one of my other videos. The first time I read Deathly Hallows, I, like many other fans, noticed just how many unanswered questions J.K. Rowling had left open at the end of Half-Blood Prince. But when I got to the Prince's Tale chapter and I realized where Jo was heading with it, I was just filled with this wave of excitement and relief that she was actually going to do this. Learning that it was all about Lily was a big deal for me. She had been hinting at this all along with the worst memory scene in Order of the Phoenix, with conversations about Harry's mother and her ability to see the best in people even if they don't deserve it. But Harry didn't see it coming, and neither did I. Snape's childhood memories were especially interesting to me, but it's clear that he had some trouble relating to people and expressing feelings of love at an early age. He's described as watching her with undisguised greed, as if that's the only way he knows how to express his feeling of wanting to be her friend and wanting to get to know her. Her. He couldn't understand why Lily was upset when he dropped a tree branch on her sister. At first, this is relatively excusable because he's just a kid. His parents are constantly arguing and he's embarrassed by his appearance. And it's possible that before Lily, he spent his 9 or 10 years without an actual friend. But he didn't learn from those mistakes and he didn't change as he got older and went away to school. Lily saw the good in him that no one else could see and even that couldn't help him. The way he was treated by his family and his classmates filled him with anger and he sent that anger back out in every direction even at the one person who believed in him and stood up for him and he lost her. And even then, that loss of Lily's friendship did not stop him from getting involved with the wrong crowd at school, from becoming a Death Eater, and from eventually influencing Lily's death by reporting straight to Voldemort and telling him about the prophecy that he overheard. If anything, that original loss of her friendship furthered his wave of destruction until he had done too much damage to take it back. It wasn't until he realized that Voldemort intended to kill the Potter family in order to stop the prophecy from coming true that Snape essentially switched sides. Though I honestly think it was done for selfish reasons, he went to Dumbledore to try and reverse the damage that he had done. Unsuccessfully, of course. The thing that really gets me is that regardless of the reason, he fought for the right side for the rest of his life. Even though he knew that he was never going to get Lily back, he understood that he made mistakes, that his actions had led him to where he ended up. And he dedicated himself to making sure that Lily's sacrifice was not in vain. He committed to this so fully that not even Voldemort could tell that he was a double agent. This doesn't excuse how mean he was to some of his students, and I don't think it makes up for what he did to Lily. I just find it really interesting. <laughs> One thought that I've carried around since I read the book is the idea that Snape could have been a father figure to Harry. Harry came to Hogwarts desperately hoping for a family, and it seemed to me that Snape's stubbornness and his inability to see past Harry's similarities with James just completely destroyed that possibility. I've wondered how different things would be if Snape had treated Harry differently, but recently someone pointed out to me that that was part of the whole ruse. Snape couldn't have let on that he was protecting Harry or Voldemort would have killed them both. So really, even if he had wanted to be a father figure to Harry, he couldn't. His life, and honestly Harry's life, depended on Snape acting like a total jerk. Though I do get the feeling that he took pleasure in that, so it worked out for him in more ways than one. Anyway, I could probably go on about Snape for hours, but I'd prefer to take the conversation to the comments and continue it there with you guys. What are your thoughts on Snape? Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.